I don't know what's wrong with him, but he will not get out of our truck. Okay. And he's got to go. Sir, it's a wrap. Looks like they want you out. I, I couldn't agree. They want you out, sir. So I'm here today to share that I have just learned about an incident that has me deeply concerned. Exactly two days ago, I became aware of an incident that occurred on November 30th in which an individual in the care of EMTs was on the way to the hospital. And for some reason, this individual was made to exit the ambulance on a city street. Okay. Honey, you told us you had pain from drinking water, and then you came in and you jumped at me and my and demanded oxygen. You would not let go of me. You figure out if you can't breathe. I hear you. I probably try to control myself a little bit better. All right, sir. Come on. Come on. No games. Get out. I was flabbergasted to learn that this incident occurred on November 30th. The person involved passed away from the health issue just before Christmas. And I was not pleased. That is the mayor of Rochester talking about a man who was suffering from a medical emergency who was kicked out of an ambulance in Rochester and collapsed on the sidewalk right in front of paramedics and his police officers before ultimately dying. This, according to the mayor, left him flabbergasted. Is there a constitutional right to not be kicked out of an ambulance under these circumstances? Let's look at the footage and then we'll discuss. That footage will show an ambulance stopping on a city street. It shows Rochester police officers being called by EMTs to this ambulance, but it shows a person having trouble breathing and being asked to leave the ambulance and wait on the street. I don't know what's wrong with him, but he will not get out of our truck. Okay. And he's got to go. Sir, it's a wrap. Looks like they want you out. I, I couldn't agree. They want you out, sir. No fight at this time. We tried to help him, but the way that you got in here and the way that you just got at us out is no... All right, sir. Come on. Come on. No games. Get out. I'm getting out. Thank you. Okay. Two seven seven out. Okay. You told us you had pain from drinking water, and then you came in and you jumped at me and my and demanded oxygen. You would not let go of me. Two four seven same traffic. Four seven same traffic. He's dead, my partner. Mm -hmm. I was freaking out. All right. You freak out too if you can't breathe. Uh, I hear you. I probably try to control myself a little bit better. I'm not going to grab on anybody. You know what I mean? No, I'll try to grab for the door. Okay. I got out of here. Okay. Okay. Now's your breathe. chance. All right. All right. Oh, thank you. Is that all you guys want, though? Then just. No? Oh, ah. Two seven seven two seven for cars. Just grab that yellow handle right there, and that should help you out. Two seven seven, all set for cars. Did you take me to the hospital? Where? No. We tried to take you, but honey, that was that was unacceptable. There was no reason for that. There was no issue. There's a yellow handle right next to you. All right, or not. That's it. That's all you drop. You okay. Your water? Sidewalk's right over there. Because he's right. freaking out. I don't know what's wrong with him, but he's got to go. I don't know what he's doing, but we're not taking him. I'm not going to grab on anybody. You know what I mean? No, I'll turn it back for the door. I'll try to get out of here. Okay. Try to get out of here. All right. Two seven seven. We should be separate cars. Two seven seven. All separate cars. 
Did you take me to the hospital, man? No. We tried to take you, but honey, that was that was unacceptable. There was no mistake. There was no issue. There's a yellow handle right next to you. Alright, not. So they made him get out of the ambulance and he walks over to this bench and he tries to sit down on the bench and he's clearly struggling and very quickly after trying to sit on the bench he ends up just falling off the bench and just going flat on the ground. Meanwhile, all these police officers are standing around. All of these medical personnel are standing around. And eventually, what's like a minute or two, they you know observe that he's on the ground and they start to go over to him and finally begin to give him some medical assistance. Uh, is that blood or is that? Is it yes, blood. Oh. I don't know what the hell happened. He was laying on the ground. I'm find out now. Okay. Bye. Boss. Oh. All right. All right. I grabbed your phone. What happened? Grab my monitor. Shit. Your car locked. It's unlocked. Modern drug box. Here's what we know at this point. We know that police were called to the ambulance to address some type of situation. We also know that the police were there to hold this medical scene. And I can tell you that even though this was not a police incident, because we are not getting information from AMR as of yet, although we have issued a letter and we have subpoenaed records. Um, we are asking our professional standard service from the police department to also help with this investigation because even though this was a medical scene, there are always lessons to be learned, particularly as it relates to what type of ambulance services or medical services our community are experiencing. I have asked AMR to conduct its own in-depth investigation into what happened that night. I want to understand why they chose to call the police. I want to understand why personnel required someone in distress to be removed from an ambulance instead of being taken directly to the hospital. We must get to the bottom of this. We must understand how and why this occurred, and we must identify processes and safeguards to ensure that this does not ever happen again. And most importantly, we must make sure that those who are caring for city residents provide them with the same level of care and compassion that they will provide their own loved ones. The, the care and compassion that they would provide their own mothers. That is the entire problem with policing in America and government for the most part. So the problem here is going to be getting a case, a lawsuit to a jury. And I'll explain why that is. But if you could, this would be so powerful. I mean, you just look at this surveillance footage of this scene where you have this poor guy just laying there on the ground. You have the medical personnel in an ambulance right there. You have, I don't know how many police officers, they're right there and they're just standing around. They clearly see him, but they don't care. They just stand around and do nothing. If you could get that in front of a jury, all you would have to do is play this footage and it would just be so powerful. You wouldn't even need to say anything. You wouldn't need to have any audio to it. You, you just play it and you let everyone watch it in silence, just like this.
So generally, police officers do have a duty under several amendments of the Bill of Rights to provide access to medical care to individuals that are in their custody, and that being the key point. So post-arrest, police officers, if they're aware of some serious medical condition, have a duty under the Fourth Amendment to provide access to medical care, such as if this individual had been arrested first, that clearly would apply here under the Fourth Amendment. Even after arrest into what's called the pretrial detainee phase, there is a right under the 14th Amendment to have access to medical care under a slightly different standard. If the police officers or the jail officials are aware of some serious medical need. And even prisoners in prisons under the Eighth Amendment have a similar right to access medical care under, again, a slightly different standard. But here, the problem is, is this guy does not appear to have been in the custody of the police officers. He was not under arrest. This is not post-arrest. There may be some argument that could be made to try to say that he was in their custody at the time, but it doesn't appear so from this footage and from, from what I've seen so far. There may be some state law remedy available, but unfortunately, the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that police officers have no general duty to protect you. They have no general duty to even get you an ambulance if they see you laying on the side of the road. And that's unfortunate because they're supposed to be here to protect and serve. But when they don't do that, when we try to sue them, they will bring up that U.S. Supreme Court case that says, oh, but we have no legal duty to protect you. We have no legal duty to serve you. And unfortunately, I think that's what might happen here, unless there are some fantastic legal gymnastics that are taken by a lawyer on behalf of this family. And I hope that's the case. I'll try to follow along to see what happens here. So please subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. Thank you.